Barack Obama came to the White House with um, a clear and sizable electoral advantage, with the House and Senate held by his party, and a professed desire to change the status quo on immigration. Frank, what happened? Well, he had other priorities. Clearly, he wanted to <clears throat> stimulate the economy with a stimulus package. He wanted to reform health care. He wanted to reform Wall Street. Immigration and energy were in the queue, but at the end of the queue. And by the time the first two years uh, transpired, he had very little political capital. The Republican uh, obstructionism was a big factor. The down economy didn't help. And what we got was a debate at the end of the first two years on the DREAM Act, a very important targeted measure, which would help young people who grew up as Americans but came here illegally through no fault of their own. And that fell short, got very close, passed the House, almost uh, got 55 votes in the Senate, but fell short of the 60. So honestly, uh, I think the president had other priorities. And I think that um, it was a real missed opportunity to fix a broken immigration system that, quite frankly, it's only going to get worse until Congress steps up and, you know, does their job. Ali, when you were in this studio early last year, uh, you told me that there was still plenty of time, that it could have been done if Congress had the will. Um, now that last year has passed and it's in history, you can share with me, there's nobody else uh, watching, nobody else watching. Uh, whether, whether in fact um, that was just something you had to say as the head of your organization, no. or whether you and others really felt that there was time uh, during 2010 to get this done? There was, there was time in 2010. In early 2010, there was a clear window of opportunity after the health care debate ended where the president, Republicans, and Democrats in the Senate and the House could have come together to, to move immigration reform forward. And at the end of the day, what happened in March of 2010 is that you had Lindsey Graham say, no thanks. And I think that he and the Republican Party really solidified their strategy of saying no to everything um, as a result of uh, the help of the president being successful around the health care bill. So you know, the Republicans, at the end of the day, stood in the way in 2010 of moving immigration reform forward in a comprehensive fashion. But there was that opportunity. There was that window. And moving forward, it's going to be in, there's going to be an incredible amount of pressure on both parties to deliver on a debate and a solution uh, that the majority of Americans want to see. Why was Republican backing so important if the president had majorities in both houses? Well, in the House, of course, uh, we could have gotten it through with just Democrats, as we saw really through the DREAM Act, although there were a number of Republicans who crossed the aisle. Uh, in the Senate, we were always going to lose a number of the moderate or conservative Democrats, uh, folks in the middle of the country who may not have a large Latino base, uh, and are you know, suspect to a lot of the pressures from the extreme right. But there have always been a number of Republicans uh, through history of this issue who have said, we want to see comprehensive immigration reform. And it was those people, Graham, McCain, who said no. Elizabeth, um, did the Obama administration on the enforcement side just continue what was being done in the, the two Bush terms? Well. They continued with some of the policy um, of the Bush administration, but I would say that their Secure Communities program is really more, um, it's, it's come to fruition within the Obama administration. That's a program that two years ago was very small, but at this point is being rapidly expanded. Um, it's a program um, that requires that the fingerprints of detainees be sent to not only the Department of Justice, but also the Department of Homeland Security um, for a check to see if the person is in the country um, in undocumented status or is removable based on the crime that's been committed. Of course, the person will be put in removal proceedings if that is the case, but this program has gone from being very small to expanding around the country. I believe it's in 986 jurisdictions at this point in the country, um, and um, we expect that by 2013 it will be in every jurisdiction in the country. We'll talk more about secure communities later in the program. Uh, when you talk to Republican legislators on Capitol Hill about immigration and the debate over comprehensive reform, one thing that will inevitably come up in the conversation is secure the border first. Let's do that first, and then we can turn around and look at these other questions, as they put it. 
Has the Obama administration done that? And if they have done that, what are these other guys talking about? The border, according to accounts, is more secure than ever. Um, whether you can ever completely secure all the borders of the country is a different question. Um, our understanding is that you can't just take an enforcement only um, approach to, to immigration, that we need a comprehensive immigration reform. Um, I think that the administration has done so much to secure the border, but it's time for a set of solutions that look holistically at the problems, and that means having comprehensive immigration reform. Well, from the Gulf of Mexico to San Diego is 1,400 miles. It's a very long border. Crossings are down, right? That's correct. And interceptions are up. I mean, we're catching people who are coming across more frequently than we were before. That's and my understanding. What, what, dif what difference, if any, has uh, having increased National Guard presence on the border made? You know, I can't, I can't speak to um, what effect it's having in terms of numbers, but I would say that for people who live in the border area, the effect is that they live in constant fear. People who think that they'll be perceived as looking like immigrants live in fear, families are being separated, um, perhaps having, I mean, I, I can't speak to whether the border is more secure with the National Guard there. Well, I, I mean, for example, El Paso, Texas is now within the top three safest cities in the country of its size. And it is you know, across the sidewalk from Juarez, which is one of the most dangerous cities in the world. Uh, we, I would argue that putting the National Guard on the border was an incredible waste of taxpayer resources when those taxpayer resources on the border should be actually going to ports of entry. Because the real issue along the border is the trafficking of drugs coming north and arms and cash going south. And the majority of that trafficking actually happens within ports of entry. So when you talk to mayors, uh, businesses, residents along the border, they talk about the need to actually have ports of entry that are secure, that are resourced in a way that can facilitate trade in a safe, manageable, and secure way. That's real border security not you know, spending millions of dollars on the National Guard, et cetera. And I think we also have to you know, think about the northern border. We have to think about harbors. I mean, this, this border debate is, is rather false because it's just talking about a stretch of desert uh, where landscapers are trying to make, 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 you know, achieve their dreams. If we want to talk about border security, let's talk about ports of entry and really where we need to make investments. Well